Thank you for joining us on the Tuesday edition of Journalist Hangout. I'm Ayodili Uzubakun. Today on the program, we'll continue our discussions on the endless killings in the southern Kaduna towards fashioning out ways to end the crisis and bring lasting peace to the area. I'll be hanging out with Babaji De Koladi Utitoju, while two guests from the warring communities in Kaduna State will join us via Skype. So if you're ready, let the hangout start now. Thank you for staying with us. We started this series yesterday. Call it, call it revenge killings, marginalization, or economic exploitation. A lot of factors have been fingered as responsible for the unending crisis in Southern Kaduna. But all we know is that the carnage has defied a solution. People of goodwill have stressed the fact that the killings must stop. On this program, we also believe it must stop. So, we bring stakeholders from the warring communities to discuss the way forward. We have Mark Jacob, a former Commissioner for Justice and Attorney General of Kaduna State, who will join us via Skype for the discussion. Thank you for joining us. And uh, my second guest is Dr. Mohamed Lawa Salisu Zango. He's the spokesperson of the Zango Urban Development Association, Zango Kataf Local Government Area of Kaduna State. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much, Ayodele. Thank you for having me. Okay, let me start from Barisa Mark Jacob. Let's begin the discussion this way. How did we get here? How did we get here? How did this orgy of killings begin in Southern Kaduna? Thank you very much. It is important from the onset to say that Kaduna State has been the beehive of sectarian, very ugly and unavoidable bloodshed. Sometimes when we segment the issues only to southern Kaduna, we do not understand what is happening. Between the year uh, uh, 2011 to date. That is when maybe we can say we had issues in South Africa. But from 1980 to the year 1999, there are incidences, very ugly incidences of violence in Kaduna State. We can say without any doubt that Kaduna. But it's not involved in security crisis. That seven, it brought into. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Go on, go on. Okay, I'm saying that up to, I mean, from 1980, from the Maitatine incident, we had a spillover in Kaduna State, where serious issues of killings and destructions took place, and. These were always characterized by religion. It's unfortunate, but that is history, and that is reality. Churches will be burned, houses will be burned, human beings will be killed. And so, if you are asking for... We seem to be having a um, problem with connection with um, Barista Mark Jacob, but I will also direct the same question to, <laughs> to um, Dr. Sally Zango. How did we get to this same place that uh, we are? And then um, the order of killings in southern um, Kaduna, how did we get here? Uh, th uh, thank you, Ayodele. Thank you, Ayodele. I hope you can hear me. Yes, I can um, hear you. Exactly. So, uh, how we got in here is an exercise in history. Beyond what Mark Jacobs is saying from 1981, it goes far beyond that. In fact, the history of the violence that has characterized Southern Kaduna is an age-long issue. Age-long in the sense that there is this unending uh, context between 
the, the, the people in Southern Kaduna that feel they are indigenous to Southern Kaduna, and they feel that any other person, aside from them, or who looks like them, or who share the kind of characteristics that they have, such a person is not an indigenous in Southern Kaduna. And because of this question of set, indigenous settler syndrome, there is this notion that some people felt that Hausas and Fulanis have come in to colonize and take their land. And there is this narrative all along that Hausas and Fulanis are going to take the land of the indigenous people. And because of this, there has been an age-long struggle, so-called struggle for self-actualization, for self-determination. And it, has, it is an issue that has... Uh, that predates all of us that are alive today. Every one of us was born to come and find the problem on the ground. But like Mark Jacobs said, from 1981, that was when violence began to be visited on the differences that exist. That was when the differences began to show and manifest. That is when some people felt they now they will now lead their people and take their destinies in their hands. And because of that, you begin to see a catalog of uh, a violence that has happened in Southern Kaduna. And that those violence further divided the people, they further created more animo animosity, they created more mistrust, they created more anger, and then different, uh, 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 the, the, the factions we have factionalized into whether or not you are a Christian and you belong to one of the tribes in Southern Kaduna, or you are a Muslim, and you belong to the tribe, but you are a Muslim, or you are a Hausa, and you don't belong to the tribe, or you are a Fulani, and you don't belong to the tribe. That was the, two, uh, that, that was the divide. And this permeated all, nearly all the communities in, in Southern Kaduna. If you take from Kaso Magani, take Kajuru, take Kachia, take Zangu, take uh, Kafancha, take uh, uh, all, all of them, Godo Godo, everywhere. So the narrative, the, the issues in Southern Kaduna are multidimensional. They have religious connotation, they have ethnic connotation, they have poverty, there is rivalry, there is anger, there is political uh, connotation. So if people come into this violence, into this crisis, into this issue, from their different dimensions, some come in because they wanted political uh, position, they will now use that as a framework to now gain what they want. Some are religious leaders, they use it as a pedestal to now continue, to now reel out to people what they feel people should do so as to further their own nest. So these complications over the years have thrown up all the issues in Southern Kaduna and then what does it lead to? Killings here and there. There is no site in Southern Kaduna that has not suffered killings, even if it is one person. But over the years, the narrative is you kill our people, we kill your people, you kill our people, we kill your people. And that is what has been going on for a very long time. And then leadership, the leadership of the communities in Southern Kaduna has not done justice to these issues, especially those leading, those who call themselves the indigenous tribes of Southern Kaduna. What is indigenous to an area? Nobody plan to be born either a house or a Muslim in Southern Kaduna. No, no does anybody plan to be born a Jabba or a a, a, a Baju or a Anatiap or whatever in, in Southern Kaduna. If everyone has a choice, maybe what we are talking about here wouldn't uh, be what we are talking about. So I think that it is essential for us to understand that these are age-long issues that we have continued to speak about them and make claims and counter claims that have not taken us anywhere. Okay. They have only continued to resort in violence and counter violence. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Ozango. Um, what we want to see is genuine reconciliation. We want peace to return to diarrhea. Mm -hmm. And I've told some of my friends from northern Nigeria that if peace could be achieved between Modakeke and Ife, mm -hmm. because there was a time uh, that this sort of uh, problem, we had it in, uh, between Ife and Modakeke. Very small, tiny were, town, Modakeke had. They were killing one <laughs> another. I'm telling you. They were killing one another. The, the, the truth is, Modakeke has literally fused into Ife, mm -hmm. you know? And there is no way by which you see someone and you'll be able to uh, identify that this is if you're, this is Buddha. The killings went on. They were but the animosity that time was... each other's houses and all that. Oh. And it was during the St. George's regime. He found a way to end the the killings. I remember somebody asking Obasanjo this question that 
if you can spend as much time as you spend outside of Nigeria seeking to make peace in warring zones within our continent, if you can spend that energy on the crisis in our country, that so, uh, these killings will stop. Obama John now told him that, how did you know that we do not make this effort? How do you know that we do not make the efforts? Mm. He now talked about a meeting yes. meant to resolve the crisis between mm -hmm. Modaki yeah, and Nifa. That, that began, <laughs> it began around 7 p.m. Mm. and ended around 6 a.m. Ah. Ah. With the traditional rulers of both, uh, both uh, communities and other stakeholders present. But at the end, we give God the glory that at least the killings that used to happen have stopped. Hmm. If he can stop in Modakeke okay. and if, stop in, uh, if he can Aguleri stop in Mambila, if he can stop in Mambila, if he can stop in mm -hmm. Aguleri and, uh, mm -hmm. and Omuneri, mm -hmm. we want to believe that if the people of South Tanka do not commit themselves from the mm -hmm. governor to the smallest person mm -hmm. in that state, if they truly commit themselves to peace and Stop thinking, oh, we have to avenge killings that happened mm, some time that's ago. That's another part of it. Peace will come. They must agree. This is an opportunity. This, this nonsense cannot continue uh, for much uh, longer. Why must we hand over our animosities? Why must we be true? I mean, uh, 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 cause our children to inherit animosities, deep animosities between one another? It makes no sense. So this generation should be able to say during our time we're able to this crisis ended i've been hearing oh this thing has begun since 18 so 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 it doesn't matter it doesn't make it, it doesn't one day mean, the problem mm -hmm. must be solved and we are saying that this is the time this opportunity must be grabbed to 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 to, to solve this problem and then it's um it's so painful that when you look at the number of people that's uh, with lot uh, that um the casualties we've, we've recorded in this crisis, you will discover that um, it's time that even the federal government and all the stakeholders must do something about this. Yes, um, somebody said some time ago that um, it's about time Nigeria saw the Southern Kaduna problem as its problem. Now, what I want to see is for the president to own this problem. Tell himself that during his time, lasting peace will be achieved. And it is possible. The president traveled to Taraba State. And what I've noticed, Jide, And he had that meeting with, Jide, what I've with even uh, noticed those Mambila kind of people crisis, that day, yes. It goes beyond military fiat. It no, goes you beyond the know. number of... We, are, we cannot the, solve the, the problem. Security apparatus. No, <laughs> no. We cannot, military approach cannot solve the problem. I've spoken with even some of the aides of the of uh, Governor uh, Erufai. I think he too has reached the point that he knows that even this problem cannot be solved by military fiat. Hmm. The people must be brought together and the people must commit to peace. Hmm. They must tell themselves that years of bloodletting must end. All the years that we put military in that area, what have we achieved? Sometimes even the armed forces take side in these matters. That is a fact. Because they are human beings like you. You know? And some of them can't watch their, their, their uh, people being killed. Mm. So they take side on this matter, either on the basis of religion or on the basis of ethnicity. Mm. So the people must come together that, look, this has to end. I keep talking about uh, Mambila because that was not long ago now. It's not up to three years. And the president went there, had that meeting with stakeholders, and they told themselves that why did we do this to ourselves? Mm. That we've been living together for many years. Why did we suddenly take up arms against one another? Today we have peace. All oh, the name calling allegation, oh, we they killed one dead uh, full and no, we, they didn't kill up to that. You are lying. Oh, you two, you killed our people. All that has ended. The leaders of, 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 of the Mambila uh, uh, community, they no longer talk about killings. Now there is peace. I've been there since peace was achieved. I went there. 
I can see that there is peace. And I'm saying that if peace can be achieved in that area, why can't it be achieved in Southern Kaduna? You see images of people being killed. It's children and women, mainly. You hardly see men being killed. Sometimes when you see men being killed, it's elderly men. Old men who cannot defend themselves. So what do we gain by our descent to barbarism? Genocide. Just Killing to, people, to pictures sent abroad. Them. People now say, oh, so Nigerians are this barbaric. That is why it has to end. This is not what we should... We, we, uh, to, to, to say, okay, this is what we tell our children. No, we, Learn not to befriend that person. Oh, learn not to run no. away from these people. Mm, it is defensive. rubbish. It has to stop. Planting the seed of seed discord. Seed of uh, discord. Right from... Petty squabbles must end. And we believe that this is an opportunity. I want to be able to say, oh, during the regime of President Buhari and the governor of Kaduna State, peace was found. And both men must commit themselves to it. They must tell themselves that whatever happens, these killings must stop. You know? The fighting words, the bad language mm. by politicians on this matter mm. must stop mm. so that we can give room for peace to take root. That is what we want to see. Okay. I have a call now. A call down. Um, a call from Dr. Um, by Usman Dambala. Thank you for joining us, Usman. Thank you, Ayodele. Yes, how can we achieve a kind of lasting peace in Southern Kaduna? Uh, thank you, Ayodele Babajide. Kudos to Johnny's Hangout for this one all-important program. Please don't listen to yourself. Just keep talking. Please. Okay. Because keep yes. talking. Don't break. Uh, the last speaker is unfortunate that the first speaker couldn't have issues with network. Yes. But uh, the last speaker, uh, Dr. Sally Suzango, has nailed the uh, uh, the nail on the head. He has hit the nail on the head very well. Yes. And he has speak on really the background. No need to dwell on those issues really. Mm -hmm. Gida, uh, Baba Gida, you and uh, Ayo have spoken well on the matter again. Everyone must take responsibility. Yes. We first, if, it is, if we are talking on how to achieve peace in Southern Kaduna, yes. we are commending the Atev Children for initiating, for come, taking this bold position. But then, for them to sign an agreement, we have to understand that the agreement has to be holistic. It has to be implemented. It, the whole of it, it has to be holistic. Meaning, there is no point signing an agreement and tomorrow doing an agreement in contrary. The citizens of Southern Kabila must understand that the leaders from the top and to the ground must take responsibility. There shouldn't be... Uh, no community should hide under the guise that it is the youth that take that took the action they took. The youth will by cut the road, they will they will, they will, they will kill passengers on, on transit, those who are not even associated with the crisis. But we are talking of committing uh, the crisis to peace and where every individual is ready for that. But then like I said, every community leader must take responsibility and give account of every crime perpetrated in his own community. The Muslim minorities and the Christian minority and majority must take responsibility. The right to livelihood, life and livelihood must be protected as enshrined as in our constitution. And also, it is very important to note that uh, <clears throat> The, the commission of inquiries set by the previous administrations, resolutions and recommendations made by panel of inquiries that were not implemented. We are of the opinion that those be reviewed and a position be taken on those matters. Because it is only when you punish that you set precedence. Failure to punish is setting a bad president. 
And so that has led to communities taking the laws into their hands, politicians, religious leaders inciting in their places of worship. Uh, so this thing will not stop only when we take responsibilities. But the crime being perpetrated, people must own up and take responsibility of those crimes. They must point out, fish out the perpetrators, and they must be brought to book. We are ready to commit ourselves to peace what they, at whatever cost, but so long our right to live and livelihood is protected in Southern Kaduna. Right. Nobody wants the killing to continue. Nobody, the most Hausa Muslim community, Hausa Fulani Muslim communities live for decades in Southern Kaduna. All right, we'll take this break. When we come back, we'll discuss more. This is Journalist Dan Gatti. Please. We're still looking at the crisis in Southern Kaduna, and we have back on the line by Sir Mark uh, Jacob. Julie, you wanted, before he left, you wanted to ask um, your question. I... The question is, many people have said that there can be no true peace achieved without um, justice being served, especially to those who are promoters of violence in the past, who uh, committed their money to killing our people. What is your view on this, uh, Barrister Mark Jacob? What is your view? What sort of justice are we talking about here because we've had some people say oh let's go back to 1992 you know probably what what they, they had in mind is a judgment as handed down by justice benedict or what, what what is your own position on this okay please uh, sorry for the cut up the point I was making is very simple, that we must tell each other the truth if we want justice, if we want peace. There is no way a government can come into the fray and take a certain position and continue to highlight that position. When Nasiru Erufaya became governor, it is very clear that for the first time we had a governor who was interested in advancing the narration of one side of the issue. And he became the spokesman of the attackers. Dr. Salis here, I don't believe he's one of the attackers. And so when you are talking as governor, you cannot afford to talk to people you say you have not arrested. You cannot afford to talk on behalf of people who have not been investigated and prosecuted. You cannot afford to speak and explain why they are doing what they are doing without, first of all, bringing them to say, this is what, why we are doing what we are doing. And so justice and fairness requires that government must, first of all, go after the real killers. Like I said, my brother, Dr. Sanji, that I know, can never carry a gun and begin to kill people. Those people doing the killing, many people have said are foreigners, including the governor of Kaduna State. And he has not brought them to tell the world why they are doing the killing. Many people, including even the, the, the presidents, including the IGP, have said that the bandits killing in Zamfara, killing in KB and Sokoto, and in fact, by, by extension, killing in Southern Kaduna, that they are not Nigerians. But you have not brought them to tell Nigerians why they are killing Nigerians. So we must, first of all, refuse this divergence. When you want to talk about Southern Kaduna and you are just concentrating on issues surrounding Southern Kaduna, you are excluding it and isolating it from all other occurrences around the country. Kaduna State particularly, since 2016, has become a hotbed of kidnapping, murder, and killings. The only problem is that when killings happen in Egyapi and Kaduna North, the governor sympathizes with the people. But when they happen in Southern Kaduna, he gives explanation as to why they took place without showing us who told him where is the source of this information. 
When you keep on saying that the killings in South Africa, now, by the way, there is nothing like crisis in South Africa. What is happening in South Africa is repeated killings where villages are surrounded and people who are known not to have had any conflict with anybody are killed in their hundreds. And then you come up with the explanation without arresting and interrogating any of their killers. How did you get the information? But is it the I job, Barrister Jacob, is it the yeah. job of yeah. uh, Nasir Erufai to make this arrest? And you also said that yes. it, it does not... Uh... It is his job. No, we boys. saw him arresting people who were flouting COVID-19 procedure. He was there arresting but those people. But those ones were it not carrying guns. As the chief security officer of the state to make sure that the police, the army, and everybody do their work. But it does he not control, it does not control the armed forces. It does not control the armed forces, which is very important. He does. He, does. he, he controls he the armed forces? If he does not control the police, how did he get the police to go and, uh, and arrest Mekori in Lagos? To go and arrest people who spoke against him in, 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 in Sokoto? To go and arrest people who spoke against let's, him? Let's, uh, on... let's just limit it. Let's just limit it to the killings mm -hmm. in the uh, Southern Canal mm -hmm. because Mekori's matter has nothing to do with the killings in uh, 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 Nasru can go after no, those who libel him. But let us limit the discussion to this yes. area mm. where we truly and want then, peace mm. so that we now, don't distract ourselves. The, the first step towards peace is truth. I have friends that are full of We live up to today. We are still together in Kapanchan. I'm speaking to you from home. I'm not in Kaduna. And we still relate. Let those who are involved, who are living at home, talk to each other. I have a memo written by Miete Allah in respect of Kaduri killings. I have a memo written by the indigenous people of uh, House of Lani Instruction living in Kaduri. In their memo, they say that there is, so, there is a group that has entered the forest and bushes of Kaduri local government and that they are hostile criminal elements but they are full of it. And they alerted government when these people came. Government did not do anything mm. until the killings commenced in Kaju. I'm saying that my friends that we grew up together with can never and will not carry arms against us. There is a third force, and government has deliberately refused to go after that third force. They are the ones doing the killings. And that is why when you talk of peace pacts, and discussions and negotiations. Without those people, there will be no peace. We had it in 2016, 2018, 2017. The peace agreements were signed. Okay. Yet, weeks after that signing, whole communities were wiped out. Let's, uh, let's have, have, have Dr. Salisu. Let's have Dr. Salisu shed more light on how we can achieve peace, since this is our major uh, preoccupation. And interestingly, Dr. Salisu has been involved in that. He is almost now uh, seen as a professional peacemaker, uh, doing, doing some work in Taraba uh, related to what we are talking about here. Your work as a peacemaker has taken you to Taraba, which is not your home state. How do we achieve peace in your home state, Dr. Uh, Dr. Salisu Zango? Southern Kaduna. Now, um, uh, thank you, uh, Baba Jide. Uh, the truth of this matter is that as long as those of us who have the privilege of education yes. and are saddled with the responsibility of leading our people one way or the other, as long as we continue to talk like my brother, Ma uh, Mark Jacob, is talking, this matter will not get uh, to its uh, conclusion. The issue here is whether you have a problem with the governor, whether you don't like Erufai, is, is something separate. The point I'm talking is the community-driven initiative that will give us this peace. Recently, the recent crisis in Zongo, for example, if there, are, if there are foreigners that are coming in and killing people, well, we can agree that has happened. You can cite instances. But the recent one in Zongo has nothing to do with foreigners coming in and killing people. The people in Gora who were attacked, the people in Gora Gan who were attacked, the people in Sagwaza who were not attacked, the people in uh, 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 around that area, 
who were not attacked can tell you exactly who are the people who attacked them and why. And it is as simple as ABC. Somebody was killed in his farm in Zongo, just on the outskirts of Zongo town. And then his, his, de his dead body was found almost 14 kilometers away from where uh, uh, he was purported to have been killed. And then Atiab youth started uh, uh, protesting. And those, the youth that brought his, uh, his, his shoes and his uh, tel telephone were arrested. And as a result of that arrest, Atiab youth prote protested. And they wanted to enter Zongo, and the security forces did not allow them. And on their way back, they decided to attack the Fulanis that they are living together with in their communities. Fulanis were attacked in mass, and they all trooped into Zongo. And then after some time, they left. Now, if what is happening, what has happened, which has triggered most of this discussion, is a revenge by the Fulanis that they killed recently, is a different matter altogether. So what I am saying is that in a community, Every community that is in crisis, like the Southern Kaduna and Zongonkat of my town particularly, the people in that community know exactly what is happening. And unless they agree and point out exactly what needs to be done, hardly can somebody from outside come to tell, uh, come to tell them what to do. For example, he talks of justice. Justice means that the person who has committed an offense should look at his brother in the face and say, sorry, I was the one that did X, Y, Z. Mm. And then the other person will say, okay, because I didn't know that, I also did X, Y, Z. Once there is justice, then there will be mercy because justice must always, always be tempered with mercy. And after that, there will be forgiveness. Yes. Once there is forgiveness, there can be reconciliation. And once there is reconciliation, there can be peace. Therefore, it is the community that will have to sit down and talk to one another. I am working on a project that we are trying to promote peaceful coexistence between farmers and hunters in Tarapa State. And to the glory of God, I can beat my chest and say that in the last one year, the communities that I'm served with the responsibility of leading this gigantic work on have self-reported that there is reduced tension between farmers and hunters. And this year, they are able to go to their farms and there has not been reported cases. And I have chiefs, I have uh, highly relevant community leaders to attest to this. Yes. So in my own community, we are looking forward to such a thing happening. Yes. The Agua Atia for the first time, for the first time has now, is now referring to some of us as his children. Yes. Because Babaji, whether we like it or not, there is no how anybody who says he belongs to a particular tribe in Southern Kaduna, he would say that he wake up one day and say that there are no Hausa or no Muslims or no Yoruba or no Igbos. It mm. will never happen. Mm. Because it will never happen, it means that we need to come back and say, we are sorry for calling you names all this while. And then the other side, we also have our own fault. Yes. Maybe we are not respectful to them. Maybe our boys are too recalcitrant. Maybe we call them some derogatory names that they don't like. Maybe we look down upon them because of some of their custom and tradition that does not rhyme mm -hmm. with our own. Maybe things like that. Yes. And then, you know, as of today that we are speaking, there are 32 chiefdoms. And, and Emirates in, in Kaduna. Now, the Atiyah chiefdom, for example, the Boju chiefdom, for example, the uh, all those uh, 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 married of them that are in South okay. Kaduna, they all came about because of this stringent agitation that the custom and tradition of people doesn't write. So they want a separate one for them. Okay, so, thank, so thank you, Dr. Dr. Salisu Dango. Like we have on the line, on, on phone joining us is Luca Biniat. Is the PRO of Sakopu. So Kapu. So Kapu. So Kapu. Southern Kaduna People's Union. Yes. Biniat. Thank you for joining us, Biniat. Yeah, hello. Biniat. How yeah, do we hello. achieve peace? How do we achieve peace in your in your area? Um, to achieve this in my area is not a difficult thing. Um, the gentleman there, Dr. Zango, has um, already given some cue. Yes. Um, there must be mutual respect for all the parties that are living in Southern Kaduna, which is not a problem for we, the indigenous people of Southern Kaduna. Um, but with the intervention of people saying so-called indigenous uh, uh, owners of Southern Karuna, that is the kind of delegatory um, words that 
you know, cause tension and provoke all kinds of uh, emotions. Number two, the governor of Kaduna State has a cardinal role to play in this. Um, his open partisanship, his open bias, his clear hate for the people of Southern Kaduna. We believe that is what is giving fuel to our long time, um, for to our long time guests, who are the Hausa and the Fulani, and all the other people who are not native to Southern Kaduna, but the Fulanis and the Hausa have taken it as a cue um, to claim Southern Kaduna as their own. And we have no problem saying that they are members of our community, um, they have been with us for decades, and they have enjoyed all that should be enjoyed by every law-abiding native and any other uh, uh, settler. So it is not true to say that uh, we do not like visitors. We have lived with Yorubas, we have lived with Igbos for decades. In fact, Kapanchang was founded more by Southerners than even um, the, the natives, because the railway line there attracted them there since 1926. The, the, of, uh, the Emirate of Jama came to uh, Kafanchang in 1932, but that's not the problem we are saying. The solution is that once victims have been placated, justice is brought to them, we, the communities, are ready to sit down together and say, where did you offend me? Why did you offend me? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Let's go on living the way we used to live. Our people are peace-loving, and believe me, once there is semblance of justice and equity, we are ready to live with whoever is living with us. Uh, Luca, I, I had you a while ago now describe some of these people as guests. Don't forget, don't forget that for some of them, for up to three generations, they've been in that area. Does it still make sense to refer to such people as guests? Mr. Uh, Mr. Jide, if I say I am indigenous, I'm a chapman, I am indigenous to a chapman in southern Kaduna, you cannot find me in uh, Otupo, you cannot find me in, in Ochitukuba. You cannot be indigenous to southern Kaduna and claim to be a house man. You cannot be indigenous to southern Kaduna and say you are a thief man or you are, you are a full animal. You, you can only be indigenous where you can only be found. And we are saying that they, do not, they cannot be in our communities and become governors of Kaduna State or become chairman of our local government. We are not saying so. But for them to say that they are indigenous to us and as such they are entitled to some of the traditional privileges and prestiges that uh, can only accrue to us as members of that community. That's not fair because they have a second home. This is the only home we have. Let me tell you, I am Luca, the son of Ishaku, the son of, uh, of, of Binya, the son of uh, Kofoy, the son of Tari, the son of Bafoy. Nobody in southern Kaduna that is Hausa and Ifulani All right. that can relate thank to, you. We have to leave it there. Today. So, thank you, thank you. We have to leave it there. It's uh, something that so, they're so passionate about and yes, it everyone, generates a lot yes. of... Everyone yes. is um, worried. But, Majide, somebody, but it doesn't take away... Somebody called you yesterday after we finished the show and yes. he was talking about this indigenization and, you know... What yes, <laughs> what um, Luca was talking about reminded me of what an Igbo man, an Igbo man called me and said, the focus should actually be citizenship and not indigenship. Hmm. And I think that when um, Erufai uh, just got to office, he talked about that, that in Kaduna, you cannot, that they are abolishing indigenship. Which means that once you, uh, you are resident in that place, you pay your taxes, you are a law-abiding person, well, well, you are entitled yeah. to all the benefits, you know, Everybody that are available. Them. Some of them, four or five generations, they don't... If we truly want to solve this problem, or these rhetorics, we must tone down these mm, rhetorics. Mm, in fact, mm. we must banish some of these mm, rhetorics. Mm. You know that in um, Rwanda, for example, mm. if you call yourself a Tusi or, 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 or Hutu, you are going to jail. Yeah. There's nothing like that That's anymore. <laughs> that is There's a no country that. that saw over a million dead yes. in sectarian violence. Mm. But they found a solution. You, 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 you see yourself as a Rwanda, Rwanda not a Tusi or a Hutsi. You can't call this. yourself a Tusi.
you go to jail. So, I think uh, we, we are still uh, on, our, on the, the um, desire to find peace. Uh, and I think that um, our friend, uh, Dr. Salis Suzango. Yeah, he's still, he's still on. Dr. Salis Suzango. I'm here, Gide. I'm here, Gide. Let me... Yes, uh, Gide, let me make a comment. For, okay. for me, very quickly, okay. it's, let's, it let's... is as simple as... It, it is very simple. Uh, the way Biniat has spoken and the way uh, my brother Mark Jacob is also uh, saying, I still insist, as long as they do not take, uh, as long as they find it very difficult to take away that narrative of calling people uh, 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 strangers or settlers or non-indigenous, the point I'm trying to ask is, if they call you an indigenous, what privilege does that uh, 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 visit on you? Mm. And because of that, if you can take away that, I think the road to peace would have been uh, laid, okay. and none of them has has denied that it is not possible for you to uproot these people and take let them away. It's let's 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 go so quickly. So I think that let's go quickly to, to uh, let's go quickly to um, uh, barrister Jacob, still on the same matter, just briefly. Yes, you see, I have my uncle who lived in Zaria all his life. He gave birth to all his children in Zaria. And as I speak to you today, his children cannot get uh, indigenous form from Zaria local government. As I speak to you today, my uncle and all his children and over 15,000 Southern Kanuna people that have lived all their lives in, in Zaria cannot, by any stretch of imagination, claim to be indigenous of Zaria. Not because they don't want to, but because that is the system. And we respect it. You don't go to Zaria. We have our brothers and our sisters and our uncles that grew up in Zaria. Why are they not giving chiefdoms? Why are they not giving their own traditional rulers? Why are they not giving ordinary citizen form? Admissions come, they are excluded. Employment comes, they are excluded. Why is Southern Kaduna and the Middle Bear generally now being used for the test run of the non indigenization of issues? You can't buy land okay. as a non indigenous in Enugu State or Imo State. Okay. You can't go to okay, the we'll and begin to blame ownership of Lagos. Okay, okay. We'll, we'll leave it there. Now, um, Dr. Salisu. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, thank you. I think my I think that my I, I think that my response to what uh, Mark Jacob uh, is saying is the same kind of narrative that has continued to create problems. For example, if uh, if somebody has lived in Zaria and he's unable to get indigenship, I take the matter back to Mark Jacob himself. He was Attorney General and Commissioner of Justice in in, in Kaduna State. What does it take out of him? They should have sent a memo for within his government. The government should have sat down and made that, dis uh, that discussion. After all, we have a law in Kaduna State that said, if you have spent up to 45 years in Kaduna State, you are an indigenous of Kaduna State. What happens to that law? If his brothers and sisters cannot get indigenous oh. in Zaria, it was because at a particular point in time, Hausa and Fulanese were unable to get indigenous in any of the local governments in Southern Kaduna. So if we can now come together and address this matter, because now it's affecting everybody, then it is something that we can do and go forward. Okay. You know? So the truth of the matter uh, is, uh, I agree me? with him. Yes. I agree with him that I agree with him that we are the, if, you, we, if they call you a minority and they say you don't belong to a place, you will suffer the kind of indignation that he's talking mm -hmm. about. It is okay. that same indignation that the House of Muslims. Okay, we have, so okay. we have a call. Jamil Ado is on the line. Thank you for joining us, Jamil Ado. Yeah, thank you very much uh, for having me how this we, evening, Baba Jide. How do we achieve peace? Peace, peace is our uh, preoccupation. Peace now. is very important, but I will quickly rush through some of the causes of this problem. It is very disheartening and unfortunate that the clings of bloodshed has been on for some time now. Yes, the conflict has its roots in the issues of indigenous settler syndrome or dichotomy. 
Yes. It is very important to understand that politicians, religious leaders, and educated elites in southern Kaduna have hijacked the whole process, and they are insincere in finding lasting peace in that region. Very Let me give job. you something. For example, what determines one political relevance and continuous stay in political office in southern Kaduna is not his performance. It is disdain or hate for a particular section of the society. Mm. When you take religious leaders, for example, any religious leader that wants to stamp his authority in the minds of his followers, he must show that kind of hatred and disdain for a particular section of the society, some as settlers, for him to have that. And to a larger extent, a section of the media also contributed, in no small way to, I am telling you, Babajidi, they... There is absolute lack of decorum in their reportage. They have, they helped it negatively in encouraging the spread of the compilated conspiracy theories. They don't hear from other sides. They act on skewed and spread one-sided narrative. Let me give you an example, Mr. Babajide. On 11th June, just as uh, the doctor there said, Dr. Zango, a man from Kauru was killed. And all of a sudden, the youth in Atiyab Chibdom took it upon themselves to kill people that they think are the ones that killed these people. What is wrong in killing Fulani? Why, why would you be killing a lot of Fulanis? They have killed well over 100 Fulanis. There's okay. no media house reported that. And there are evidences. Okay, Jami. I have solutions, Mr. Th Baba Didi. Thank you. You, you, you already made a, um, a very valid point that the elites mm. are worsening this crisis. Mm. The elites, for selfish reasons, are promoting violence in Southern Kaduna. Doesn't make sense. And for a lot of them, they do not even want this to end. But God is greater than them. Doesn't make sense. And this crisis will come to an end. Mm. We, we can't mm. continue mm. to kill ourselves in this way. And I just want to give a... Uh, um, let me start from um, Barisa Mark Jacob. Your party short on this. The simple thing. Government must change its narrative and open up the discussion. When a governor says he's not going to talk to Southern Canal people, he's not going to open his doors to them, that is the beginning of failure. The doctor here will know that if you don't talk to people, there is no way you can do justice to them. Okay, the okay. Thing is that we have to leave it there. We must accept. We have to leave it there. Every, our, time, our time is fast spent. Mm -hmm. Dr. Salisu Zango, your party shot. Thank you very much. My party shot is very simple. As long as uh, people do not separate their political interests from what they think somebody is doing, uh, as long as we've not brought this to community level, where we begin to talk to ourselves, where we talk to our traditional rulers, there are very good people who are Christians in Southern Kaduna that can drive this process. There are very good traditional rulers who are Christians and Muslims in Southern Kaduna who want peace that can drive this process. Okay. There are very finally, good individuals. Finally, let me quickly take Kashmir on phone. Thank you for joining us. Your yes, intervention, quickly. Hello, Ida. Thank you very much. I think I think uh, the two speakers are about. Thank you very much, uh, Ida. From the UK. Okay, please go ahead uh, with your contribution, quickly. Okay, the, the two speakers have actually spoken well, but I think we need to realize one thing. There is, there is a narrative that the Southern Canada issue is actually being caused by the elites. Yes, the elites have got a to play. And if the government of the day have actually identified who are the elites, why not go after the elites? But I think the bigger picture is this. We, are, we have a situation where there are injustice, there are years of issues that have not been resolved. The doctor has spoken about it, but has, has spoken about it. I think we need to really to sit down and be truthful to ourselves. As Senator Sani actually said, we need to get an independent, sincere arbiter. Also, Pastor, I mean, Apostle Kure have actually said the same thing. So I think we need to be able to really get somebody who is sincere, who is not biased, to basically sit down and then let's see what is going on. I believe with that we can move forward. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you, you Kashmir. Kashmir. <laughs> I I like to thank Barista Mark uh, Jacob for your intervention and um, Mr. Salisu Zango. Thank you for your intervention. Yeah. Jude, 
Thank you, Dr. Salisu. I'm really grateful for the opportunity to share this stage with you. And uh, the former Attorney General, uh, Barrister Mark thank Jacob, you. thank you for your time. We are grateful uh, for the insight that you provided. And by the grace of God, peace will come to our land. I was born in Kaduna, so I do not want Kaduna to remain um, identified by violence. By God's grace, this whole violence will come to an end. Thank you, gentlemen. Yeah. And that's our offering Thank today. You, Join us tomorrow for another episode of the program and watch journalists hang out on our platform showing on the screen. Well, YouTube, youtube.com slash TVC News Nigeria. Our feedback channel is journalist hangout at tvc.tv. I'm Ayodili Uzubaku. See you tomorrow and God bless Nigeria. <laughs>